Hey, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make the mysterious holiday classic, sugar plums. In researching the Googles, there is some debate about what sugar plums are, what their history is, what it means. It's a little ironic actually because it's very similar to the holiday that they seem to somehow represent. So uh, I'm going to share with you a recipe that I've sort of made up based on the little research that I did and looking at some other recipes for confections like this. So the version of sugar plum that I'm going to be doing today is most similar, honestly, to a power ball. <laughs> it has several dried fruits and nuts, but it does include some sugar on the inside and the outside. So it will have that, you know, tooth aching holiday joy in it. <laughs> but it also does have a little bit of nutrition and protein too. So kind of nice. So we're gonna make this in the food processor. And the first thing I'm gonna add is eight ounces of roasted slivered almonds. I like to always use nuts that are roasted or toasted. It just adds so much flavor, especially when it's a recipe that you're not gonna be putting in the oven. Uh, for sure, you wanna roast or toast the nuts first or purchase them that way. Uh, to the eight ounces of slivered almonds, I'm going to add eight ounces of dried plums, otherwise known as prunes, but doesn't dried plums just sound much more appetizing? <laughs> And then I have four ounces of dried figs. And first, I'm just gonna cut the stems off. Um, I was wondering why figs come with the stems intact, unlike really any other dried fruit that I can think of. And apparently, um, when they pick the figs, it's important that they keep the stems intact or the whole fruit basically just disintegrates and um, perishes within 24 hours. So they actually wanna keep the stems in through the whole drying process. Um, but they aren't really edible or pleasant. To, I mean, it's not gonna you know harm you if you eat one, but they're not pleasant to try to chomp on. So you just wanna go ahead and chop those off. So I've just removed all the stems from the figs. And I'm going to go ahead and add two ounces of this raisin berry blend. I actually had this left over from a charcuterie, so I included it in my recipe. I think it'll add a little extra twist of flavor. I love to use the raisin berry blend for charcuteries, just sprinkle it around at the end. It adds a lot of um, color and nice little sweet flavor. Um, so while I'm blending these in the food processor, I'm just gonna turn on my stove and toast up some spices here. And just get those going until I can smell them. So we're gonna give this several pulses until it creates a meal. Um, but we don't want to take it to the point of a paste or a nut butter. Okay, you can see that this is starting to nicely hold together. It does still have some nice chunks in it though, so it'll have a nice mouthfeel, nice and crunchy and chewy. It won't just be a ball of mush. So I think that'll be about right. And meanwhile, I do smell the spices heating up there. And once you're getting a really nice, good, strong smell off of them, you can go ahead and remove them from the heat. Mmm, that's just gonna bring out their flavors so much more, especially in a no-bake recipe like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer this into a mixing bowl to add the other ingredients. And now the spices that I have ready to go that I've just finished toasting is a fourth teaspoon each of ground cinnamon, fennel seed, and anise seed and an eighth teaspoon of ground cloves, and then a few twists of black pepper. So with the dried fruits and those wonderful strong spices, this is gonna be that very classic earthy flavor that appeals to people who usually probably like mincemeat pie, fruitcake, pumpernickel rye. <laughs> it all seems to be in the same kind of uh, flavor category, at least in my mind. I think my dad would really like these sugar plums. So I'm just gonna add the spices. And then I'm gonna add one fourth cup of honey. Uh, this already smells amazing. 
I do enjoy those sorts of earthy flavors, but only in moderation. <laughs> this is probably the sort of thing that I would just like to nibble on, but I think it would be a really fun addition to a spread on maybe a goodie table at a Christmas party, nestled in amongst the super sweet and just pure sugary, you know, cookies and candies, fudge. To have something like this, it's really different. I think people would also really enjoy if you made a little label that said sugar plums, <laughs> so they'd know what they were looking at and tasting, and it would really make a conversation piece. And I, honestly, I think this is a simple little recipe that could really make your party memorable because perhaps years later, people might be saying, oh yeah, sugar plums, we did try those once at that party. <laughs> So that's kind of fun. Um, I'm just going to moisten my hands before I use them to mix this together. And I'm also going to remove my wedding ring. So this is really the best way to mix anything like this up. You just really got to get in there with your hands. This is the sort of thing that my son Oliver likes to help with. At least for a little while until he gets distracted with licking his fingers every 10 seconds. So I'm going to mix this all up until it's completely homogenous. So now I'm just gonna roll them into balls. I'm gonna make them fairly small, especially since this is kind of an unknown thing. That way if someone takes one and they don't prefer it, they're not stuck with this <laughs> large item they need to chew. And I'm just gonna plop it on a plate or you can even put it on a cooling rack. And um, according to other recipes that I looked at, it's advisable to let them kind of dry out for a few hours before you roll them in the sugar or the non -perials. Um, because that way they won't just be so moist on the outside that they just very quickly dissolve whatever that you've chosen to roll them in. Um, what I've decided to roll mine in is, I'll wash off my hands and show you. Okay, clean hands. I've decided to roll mine. I have this gold um, finishing sugar. It has the large crystals and they have a really beautiful gold shine to them. And then I also have some white non perials and I think that will kind of give it a snowy look. So I think I'm going to combine the two of those and that will make a really nice presentation on the plate that will give it a bit of a holiday look instead of just power balls. <laughs> so as soon as these have set up, I'll finish rolling them. And when they've set up, I will finish them with the exterior confection and then we'll show you what they look like when they're all ready for the party. Just a note about spices as I'm thinking about them and making these cookies. When you need to buy a special spice like anise or fennel, maybe it's something that you don't use on a very regular basis for a specific recipe. It's actually, I mean, what I used to do and what I think a lot of home cooks do is I just go to the grocery store, pick up a box of whatever, the, the one that was on sale, <laughs> take it home, use a teaspoon, stick it on my spice shelf and forget about it for five years or a year or two. Um, honestly, one way that you can take your home cooking to the next level is buy quality spices and just buy what you need until the next time. Because that $2 box of anise seed, it's not gonna taste very good five years from now when you might wanna use it again. <laughs> um, the oils will have possibly gone bad or have lost a lot of their flavor and aroma. Um, and so really it wasn't a bargain to get that big box of anise seed for two bucks when you could have gone to a specialty spice shop and just purchased a very, you can get a very small amount just in a little baggie. Maybe it would also cost $2. So, you know, the price per ounce is a lot more, but just get what you're going to use and use it in your recipe and be done. You don't have all these spices that you never use cluttering up your cabinet and just getting old and honestly, making your cooking not taste as good as it could taste. So that's just a little tip that I've learned along the way that I think is very helpful, not only in reducing pantry clutter, but also in increasing the quality of your cooking and baking. Um, there's actually a couple different tips that I've learned that have really helped, um, I think, to take home cooking to the next level. And that's one of them. And the other one is don't be afraid of salt. Um, you know, try to make your cooking be such that 
You don't need to take a salt and pepper shaker to the table. Season it well. And that is like a huge difference between restaurant quality food and a lot of home cooking is the home cooking just tends to be under seasoned. So with those two things, I think those really help to uh, take it up a notch. Thanks so much for your time today. And if you give these a try, please do drop a comment. Or if you have your own version of sugar plums that you like to try, uh, let us know. And please don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell so you get notifications when my next video is coming out. My husband and I will be sampling these in our holiday foods from holiday songs um, taste test. Uh, we're gonna be sampling four different foods from Christmas carols, including these sugar plums. So I'm not gonna taste them in this video, but tune into that one and see what we think of the flavor of these sugar plums.